Hey, this is Matt once again. What about the end of the video? This is a paid request from Jack Thompson who wanted me to react to, he says the first 30 minutes of this video, Mike Mate AVGN help compilation. Now, first off, for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. It'll be for pretty much any type of video. Now, I have seen this video before. So I am very familiar with it. Uh, I do like Mike Matei. I've seen a couple of his live streams. I definitely know that he has helped James Rolfe a lot. That really he is the actual angry video game nerd. I think people kind of know that now. But I do remember going, man, this guy did a lot for that site, that character. May not have been a perfect guy. Wasn't it at one point he like showed his dick or something on some Reddit post or something? I don't know. So definitely some weird stuff. Like a lot of people do weird stuff, but I do like a lot of his stuff and uh, yeah. He's a guy that seems like the you know shot and mess around with people. It seems like he's calmed down a bit. And it seems like he's happier too, just doing the streaming stuff on Twitch. So, I'm not going to show the video. I know people get mad at that because I don't want to deal with copyright. In it. Well, I wonder if copyright would be a problem. I don't know. Because the guy who did this compilation is Maki Hara. And I didn't get his permission. So maybe he'd be mad that I'm taking his footage. They compilated from a lot of Mike Matei streams. So I'll do this. I'll just have the link down below in the info box. If you want to hit that link. And when you're on computer, have another tab or another window and follow along with me, feel free. The link will be down in the info box along with the PayPal Patreon links. And let's get to it. I know he wanted me also to look through comments at the end, but again, this is going to be for the first 30 minutes of it. 3, 2, 1, pressing, play. So he's talking to commenters when he's doing streams. He says, thanks for making AVGN. Now he says James based AVGN, but I helped him. I helped him find the video games, play the games together. Yeah. So he's downplaying his role in the AVGN stuff. Which is kind of nice. He's 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 not wanting to take the credit from James. I knew that he did. James Rolfe had done that Castlevania two video, and he showed it to a couple friends. And I think Mike Matei said, "Oh, you gotta make more of those. Make more of those." Oh, okay. Because <laughs> James wasn't sure about it. Like you say, it was going to be just a one off. The Tiasavania 2 video. But my Mate said, Oh, I hope you made more. This game is playing. What do you do? It, it looks like Cat. It looks like Pat. Oh, okay. It is like Pat Man. It's like a different version of Pat Man. You gotta get the pellets. Is that Vetrex? Oh, it is Vetrex. Okay. Vetrex is a very interesting video game. How do I put it? System. Video game system. Just visually. I don't know how to describe it. Just the way it visually looks seems distinct. Especially when you see it in person. Compared to other video game systems. So he's talking about the early stages of AVGN.
So James borrowed Mike's games. It seemed like James had the idea, but Mike kind of pushed him to do it. I think Mike McTayna pushed him to do it and go, this is really funny. You need to keep doing it. Again, it seems like Mike Mate was the fan who pushed him into making it. So yeah, so as yeah, he says there, my Mate is the one that kept asking him. So again, my Mate pushed James into doing this. Like he, James had the initial idea, but my Mate pushed him. Without my Mate pushing him, you wouldn't have any of AVGN. So my Mate picked Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and that's a classic review. So early on, he worked on the Roger Rabbit video. And he set up the room, too. I remember it's like, man, God, he did a lot of stuff, and people don't... People didn't know or didn't appreciate just how much he did. And you see it with the... When the guy's gone, you saw how it just went downhill <laughs> and Mike I think Mike Mate was a dick at times but he seems like a decent guy that kind of just wanted to have fun and seems a lot happier nowadays and doing the the streams But I, I do like Legend of Zelda for Super Nintendo. That is a fun game. Really the only Zelda game I've... Yeah, he played a lot of the characters in the skits. He was... A lot of characters in the Wizard of Oz video game. He was Joker. So my mate helped come up with the the shit pickle stuff too. <laughs> oh, two thousand four. Okay. There's a guy that got a tattoo of this? What the hell? Oh, he drew the character. Someone got a tattoo of that? That's crazy. I love the NES Ninja Turtles game. Really, it's a tough game, but... So now Mike is talking about Ninja Turtles, and I just worked on the episode with James, which became, I think that was what really cinched AVGN's popularity, was the Ninja Turtles one. Because he did stuff before, but that was the one that I thought got the most push. Because people remember that game the most. Everybody played that game back in the day. Ninja Turtles being very popular at the time. <laughs> so 
So my Mate came up with the idea, you just walk over it. He came up with the line. He was playing the game and he came up with it. <clears throat> and that's another thing that people don't realize is a lot of times my Mate played the games, recorded the games for James. Seemed like the big highlights of Ninja Turtles was because of Mike Matei's contributions. Like you could walk over it. And he did the gameplay, he helped write it. I mean yeah, Mike Matei does love that game. I've seen his playthroughs on it. Which is fun. Fun playthroughs. F After years and years, I was finally able to beat Ninja Turtles on NES. I have that on the channel. Proud of myself. Never thought I would be able to do it, but I was able to. It's a very tough game. Very tough game. He wrote the Zelda timeline. Wow. And he told James the uh, the Atari ET, the ET Atari landfill thing. Wow. Does the thing is James? What people don't realize, James is not that big of like he likes video games, but he's not this big gamer like people expect of him. James is more into the filmmaking aspect. Of acting and playing a character and directing it, filmmaking with the stits, with the effects. That's what, that's more of his love. That's more of his desire. My Matei was more about the video game aspect of it. My Matei is much more knowledgeable in the video games. And you see, when James went to do the movie, and my Matei had nothing to do with it because he wasn't interested in the movie, which I don't blame him. He has like a little cameo, probably shot like a green screen or something, just added. In. Or he was there for like some to visit and hey, you want to pop in and be in this scene? So Master Chu, he recorded the gameplay of that. Jesus. For what was some would say the golden years of the golden years of AVGN, it was a two man team. James and Mike. Now I think Mike didn't always handle the website responding to people the best way. But maybe in retrospect, he he could have done some more. Ah, uh, so Mike wrote the NES Star Trek and the NES Superman. Wow. But yeah, Jane, you tell my Matei was much more into, and I mentioned this in my Matei because nobody's perfect. I'm far from perfect. Many people out there are far from perfect. We're all far from perfect. We all have, have our bad days, our good days, our off moments, our decent moments. So I'm not, and he got a lot of crap for it. It was deserved, but it was a long time ago. And he really hasn't done anything since. He's kind of just again, went away and he moved on. He kind of knew it was time to move on. I think when all those Streamwave guys got in, it's like, we're going to do this podcast. 
We don't do rental reviews. We don't do all this other stuff. And he's like, I think my Mate is like, I'm not really interested in this. I'm not really intrigued by this. I'll just move on. But he doesn't want to screw over his friends. He he doesn't want to screw over his friends' uh, way of making money. I don't know if my Mate gets a percentage of it. Because is he... I guess not. But I guess he saved up enough money. Uh, that's what I'm saying. They saved up enough money. And now he's doing this Twitch thing. That... He can live comfortably just doing this. If that's the case, it's nice. It's pretty nice. Okay, that was a funny line, like sticking your dick in a Cheerio. That was actually a pretty funny line. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, his sense of humor may be juvenile. I mean, mine is as well. So actually, he was the angry video game nerd. That's the thing. For all the good and bad, he, he was the AVGN move. Nerd. He was the guy. <clears throat> I think when you look at the critiques and review of these games, I think they're all most of the team from Mike Matei. He's much more honing in on that video game, which is one of the things people like about those reviews, those videos, is talk about the actual game and the issues with it. Like the way he's talking about Top Gun here. Now he does explain there's more to the missiles. I, I was talking over it. I forget what there was. Actually, let me pause. I'm paused at 15 minutes and 20 seconds. Let me go back just so I could hear that real quick as to what he was saying about the missiles. Because I'm just curious about it. One second. Bear with me. When you get to level 2 or level 3, there are battleships and a boss. That's an energy bar. If you're using a bunch of weak missiles, it makes it hard to, to defeat. Okay, so it's about stuff that came out later. Okay, so later levels, but it seemed like you couldn't get to those levels, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. It's like you only got to, what, level one or two, and then you t <laughs> the land in the plane. That was what was the funniest, was the land in the plane stuff, and just how much of a pain in the ass it was. That was the, the funniest part of the video, so. But 15 minutes, 20 seconds in, unpause now. <laughs> he trashed that... He trashed that again. Ah, <laughs> uh, Rotti for Sega Master System. I remember the AVGN episode of this. Now, also the differences between this and when he had to put it on the Blu-ray. This is one of the ones that was the most altered because in that one... He had much more of the Rocky music. He had to show like three. He showed all five movies in different TVs and film projectors. And I think that helps the review a lot better. Obviously, could not do that for the Blu-ray because of copyright. But that's one that's definitely better to see the unrated version. <laughs> He's already pissed at the Rocky game. 
Just his anger seems illegitimate. That's what's funny about it. Like they, you know, he's the angry video game nerd. Like I said, my Mate is not perfect. There's a whole deal with him and that one guy, Bootsy, and there's a that's a whole other thing they get into. Where what you know, each one each person has their own side of what made Bootsy leave because Bootsy's like I could beat all these hard games. He was doing very well, but that didn't last long. And I forget the the details what it was all about. It seems like something that could have been handled a lot better. Because you have these folks that are just into playing video games and. You're doing this whole new th hemisphere of YouTube. Going from that to be a, a businessman. When you haven't studied to be a businessman, you don't make a lot of mistakes, including, especially if you have a hot temper. Money can be a big sore spot that could really raise tensions. I'll put it that way. You always gotta be careful of that stuff. I keep repeating this just some people may bring this with my bate and they're legitimate complaints, but I still like the guy. I still like the guy despite him not being perfect. I still like his dreams. I still like his demeanor. I definitely think he was very legitimate help at making the AVG and how popular he was. It wasn't just James, it was the both of them. One needed the other. James was the face and the initial idea and Mike really got allowed the the engine, the locomotive to go to the heights it went to. And yeah, I think he was smart enough to walk away. I think he knew this is kind of it. And he was right. See, so he mentions the Atari system, which is one of my favorite episodes. And then the Rockerola. Why does Link look feminine in that magazine? He looks like a... He's got like a girlish figure link. Does he not? That Avengers link? He looks like a girl. The body. He he does have like a girlish figure. I don't know. Oh, Godzilla for Nintendo. I had this game. It was a pain in the ass. Really? Never play as Mothra. That's the thing. Never play as Mothra in this game. As little as you can. I think you have to, though. Is I think that's the thing. You have to. Just the idea of both. But, okay, I'll put it. Never use Mothra for a boss. That's what I meant to say. Never use Mothra to fight a, a creature. The, enemy, the boss battles. If you use Mothra, you might as well be... You're screwed. Use Godzilla for everything to defeat all the bosses. And then Mothra, get him as fast to the end as possible. So he helped that a lot of the early Monster Manda stuff. He helped write Super Pitfall. So more than likely, yeah, my Mate knew of this game, Super Perfall, knew that it existed, knew the issues of it. <laughs> like, his legitimate anger here is funny because 
that helped make that one of the better AVGN episodes. Ah, the Terminator for NES. Never played this one. Silver Wings, uh, that guy, he played this game and he made it look easy. But he's he's good at doing that. I don't think this game would be for me. The platforms would seem very annoying to me. And... I don't know. It would just seem very irritating for me. Like the platforms, it would be very annoying. The jumping of the platforms. But yeah, Civil Wings, check out his playthrough. He he played fairly easily. But I mean, he's practiced a lot on it. Ah, uh, Ghostbusters. Of course, the classic end there. Congratulations, you have completed a great game. Bullshit. Proved the justice of our culture. Now go arrest our heroes. Congratulation. You approved. <clears throat> the NES Ghost Buzzer, it seemed like, like capturing the ghost would be fun at first. But that stairwell ending, I actually like Jaws for NES. I don't think it sucks. It's very simple arcade style. But actually, I do like Jaws for NES. I think it's a fun one. I mean, it. Yes, Bill and Ted is awful. NES game, yes. For NES LGN, I actually think this is one of the better ones. Jaws. Because, I mean, it's kind of this RT style. You're fighting other sharks and fish, you know, jellyfish. Looks like stingrays, all this stuff. You're powering up to defeat Jaws. I mean, it's kind of like arcade style. Uh, Back to the Future 2 and 3. I wish I could find the stream this was on where you played this. But I cannot find it. If Jack Thompson or anybody... If you do find the stream where Mike Mate plays this game, please let me know. Because Back to the Future 2 and 3 seems like the worst game ever. I want to see him go insane playing it. I said I could not find him his playthrough of that. Like I looked on Twitch, but it's hard for me to look through Twitch because I guess with videos they disappear. They're gone after a certain time. Like it's not like YouTube where I could load up a video from ten years ago. It seems like Twitch if it's after a amount of time they just disappear. I just unless you download it and you upload it somewhere else, but never played Star Wars for NES. I played Super Star Wars for Super Nintendo. Oh, there's a Grinch game for PlayStation. I didn't... It took me a bit to realize that. I didn't... Didn't know there was a Grinch game for PlayStation. Yeah, this game I remember having and being just confused as to what the hell to do.
So yeah, he drew, I remember those old title cards. I did like them. I thought they were pretty cool to see. House Fair Chronicles. Oh, yeah, for PlayStation. I played it for a little bit. It seems pretty fun. So, update, you know, update version of Castlevania. I didn't get to play it too much, though. But, yeah, it seems pretty decent game. So he wrote the and then and I didn't play the Nintendo sixty four. I played Castlevania, a little bit of the first game, a little bit of Bloodlines, a little bit of Symphony of the Night. I played for like an hour. I enjoyed it, but the Sally the the guy only requested one episode. He didn't request any others. Maybe he didn't like what I did. So, ah fuck this guy. But so, and it's been so long. I would not even remember where I left off. So. I never played more of that game. But when I played Symphony of the Night, it seemed fun. But again, I haven't played for so long. I don't remember a thing about it. <laughs> oh, and Super T Castlevania 4. That's a fun one. That's, a very, that's my favorite Castlevania game that I've played so far. Super Castlevania 4. Wish list episode, okay. I wonder on his Twitch, like, if people still ask about AVGN since he's been away for quite a while. Like, I can't remember. I can't even remember when did he leave. Like, he left a long time ago. So I did. Yeah, I do not remember. This has been a long time. Does he still doing stuff? He just did Star Wars Starfighter for PlayStation 2 a day ago. Uh, he bought a lot of the NES collection that you see in the nerd room. Wow. <laughs> so, like, hey, James, thanks for the... There you go. <laughs> There's your gift. But I'm going to pause there. He he mentioned just the first 30 minutes, which is fine with me. He also mentioned to go through the comment section. Which, Yeah, I mean, like, I've seen this video before, and, yeah, people don't realize just how much Mike McTay truly helped with the nerd stuff like he was absolutely essential with all that 100 percent and 
So Mike completely wrote the script to several classic AVGN episodes. I mean, AVGN is a character that sits on his couch all day yelling and cursing. And that's Mike's actual lifestyle. So I guess it's not all that surprising. Yeah. He's the real AVGN. He later wrote a lot of the scripts, played the games, bought the games, directed James, pushing to make more AVGN in the early days, and still says James was 90% of the importance for the show. I mean, he's the face of it. Yeah. I think it, he wants to you know, give credit to, to James, and he doesn't want, it's his friend, so he doesn't want to take all credit for it, so I can appreciate that. It's really like 99% James. Proceeds to explain how he was the driving creative force behind AVGN's Golden Age and did a lot of the late work. I think most it'd be more like 50 50. James started it. It's his like persona, his acting, overacting, however you want to put it. But a lot of what uh, Mike wrote, played, bought, recorded, pushed, uh, lies they came up with. Sometimes you don't know, you don't know what you got till it's gone. I remember people used to absolutely hate on Mike when he was on playing cameos and Navy Jen or doing his own podcast. Now that he's gone, he was apparently always the heart of the show. Where's the love when he was still around? When Mike was there, people hated Mike. Now that he's gone, they love him. Yeah, that's true. That, that happens a lot. It's Again, you don't know what you got until something worse comes along, and then the enemy of the enemy is my friend. My enemy of my enemy? My enemy of my enemy? It's my friend. That happens a lot. I mean, that happens with... A lot of times movies, oh, this movie sucks, but then you see one, two, three movies that are way worse. You go, you know what? Maybe you weren't as bad as I... Lethal Weapon 4. That'd be Lethal Weapon, I'm like, Lethal Weapon 4 sucks. But then I'll watch you know, Star Wars, The Last Jedi, Force Awakens, Rise of Skywalker, Terminator Genesis, Terminator Dark Fate, you know, The Predator. You know, I watch all these other movies. I'm like, you know what, Lethal Weapon 4, you actually weren't that bad. <laughs> <clears throat> the Heart of Age of Vision left with Mike. I agree. James is a great guy, don't get me wrong, but James outgrew video games a long time ago. He still does AVGM because he loves films, not video games. My definitely is the embodiment of the AVGM character. The guy still has passion for video games and plays them religiously. Yeah, that is absolutely true. That is the, the truth of the matter. He hit the nail on the head. James was more about filmmaking. And I was trying to stumble through that because I'm trying to talk, but then I'm trying to listen because I don't want to miss anything. His early days, he was directing zombie films, short horror films. That was his love. That was his first love. I still think his major love. That's why he wanted to do the movie. He didn't want to do the movie because I get to play the AVGN. He wanted to do a movie because I get to direct and be a filmmaker. And then he had that section with the... He had that section with the, the zombie stuff, the nightmare scene, and... Deal with sci-fi stuff with the aliens and Area 51, wherever the hell it was. And that's what he was in love with and doing. And it wasn't done that well. And to be honest, a lot of the people who watch it, it's not really his love of movies they like. It's the video game stuff. And that's what people brought him to the dance, what brought people to the show. Considering James never saw himself as a video game guy, more of a movie guy, I always wondered how he knew so much about gaming and game history. I can't even imagine how much time it took to source this video. Yeah, there's a lot of streams this guy went through to get all this stuff. I was so sad when Mike decided to retire from making AVGN with James. Even as a fan of mine, I had no idea how much he had to do with making episodes. Mike Matei was the AVGN the whole time. Yeah, I picked up on these things in the James and Mike Monday videos. When you tune in on my streams, you catch the same type of wordplay and comedy as in the first half of the AVGN series, which I honestly much prefer over the later episodes. Yeah, 
a lot of things he'll talk and it seems like an AVGN in real life, you know. Damn, I just like you were part heart and part soul of AVGN. You deserve more respect and credit. Damn, Mike really chipped in when it came to buying games and consoles. Mike is the angry video game nerd. AVGN clearly has not been the same since Mike left. That is true. Not saying Mike is perfect by any means, but I think I have the complete wrong idea of the guy. He may be a bit eccentric, but I generally believe he has a lot more to do with the success of AGN than the average person gives him credit for. Yeah, Days of My Mondays was a fun uh, show they had as well. Quite a few of those episodes I enjoyed. Let me look at new ones. New comments. Because this is from two years ago. All James did. Okay, this is all James thing I just did. Mike's way too humble. It appears to me the video games could have used 10 or 20 more years in the Commodore NES phase to really get developers to learn how to make interesting, fun licensed games. Mike is the real AVGN to me. Mike is even. James isn't even that angry anymore. I love Mike. I recently got to his live stream stuff after turning 40 and realizing that I've just about seen most of the VGN stuff. I feel bad for Mike. Some on the internet got the impression he was leeching off of James' success when it turns out it was the other way around. Yeah, that that is actually an interesting uh, that uh, the dear credit Lusty2 L-U-S-T-E-2 Yeah, a lot of people thought, oh, what's this guy Mike doing? He's piggybacking this guy. He's riding this guy's coattails. He saw this buddy got success. Now he's trying to ride it as much as possible when this guy did a lot of the work. Like, but what were they supposed to do? Be like, hey guys, by the way, look what I did, look what I did, look what I did. He was he would be considered a dick if he did that. Here it's he's answering questions from a chat. People are asking. Yeah, pretty much a lot of people say Mike is the AVGN, which is the truth. That's the absolute truth of the matter. So, but, yeah, I mean, I know there's streams of Mike Mate playing the original Back to the Future, but like I was saying, if anyone has the live stream where you play Back to the Future 2 and 3, I think they're long gone from Twitch, Sally. But if you if everyone ever finds that, please let me know, and I would love to check them out. But thanks once again, Jack. I really appreciate it. Jack Thompson, thanks for watching, everyone. And we'll see you guys later. Bye bye.